In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy God, mighty God, immortal God, renew us, restore us. Thy word is a lamp unto our feet. Amen. And at this time, we bless and uh, we thank you for our, our shifting of locations again. And we ask you to bless those who are ill. And, and by your stripes, heal some backs right about now, Lord. Amen. Amen. And set people free. And may our beloveds have no pain tonight. May they rest um, and have a good eight hours of rest and, and rise to thy glory and to thy, to thy sight. And, th and may we give have sight to all that is Jesus in his word. Glory to Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will, um, we've studied on our own um, the, the tabernacle. We saw how it was laid out. Um, it really was a, a phenomenal study, wasn't it? Yes. So we're just go through these chapters, just to repeat 25 to um, 29, through, and then it's repeated. It's very strange that it's repeated twice. Mm -hmm. So you reread re it, and they say, well, what did God say on the mountain? And then we go through all these chapters all over again. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very strange scripture. Mm -hmm. And you might think a typographical error, it's just all over again. And that happens a few little times. Like I'm thinking of um, Peter when he was um, going to baptize Cornelius. So Acts 10 and Acts 11. So it's kind of like a doubled, uh, double chapter, just repeating it again, the information. And when St. Paul got converted, how many times did he get converted? Once, but it was ongoing. And there were three times we hear in 9 and 22 and 26 of Acts that it got converted. Mm -hmm. But just so, you, just so you can see that this is the part of the Bible, for the most part, it's not preached. Mm -hmm. um, it's, very, mm -hmm. uh, it's very unknown to most. Mm -hmm. So what we studied up to this point is sharpen your, your clarity. So um, I, I, I just want to because we've been through 25, Exodus 25, Exodus 26, Exodus 27, Exodus 28, Exodus 29. We've already been through all of that. Mm -hmm. But uh, we'll just highlight things, and then we're going to be heading toward the golden calf incident, which changed all of Israel forever, and opened the door, ready? And here's the good point. The good point is it opened the door for divine mercy. Mm -hmm. So this is the this is the birth of divine mercy, and then from there we'll go into um, kind of give you a background where we're going to Yom Kippur, the first Yom Kippur. Have you ever heard of the Book of Jonah? Yes. Uh, Jonah is always read on the feast of Yom Kippur. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. There we go. Hmm. Mm. Mm. So we'll highlight this, and then, well, after we after we do this, we'll see again these chapters repeated, so we don't have to repeat the repeat. Okay. Okay. Mm. I'm sure we can find new information. So we'll just highlight a few things, and I think uh, at chapter 25 we were highlighting them, just little highlights, just little snippets. Okay. Yeah. And so okay. when you see when you say 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, it's it's the framework. It could be boring. We, we covered that on our extensive study. Mm -hmm. And if anybody needs the, uh, um, the sheet, you need to get what's called the tabernacle. tabernacle. Right? I think everybody has the sheet here. Mm -hmm. The long, long uh, study mm -hmm. of how the tent was in the... Um, that's what you would need to get. The producer put it on the screen. Thank yeah. you, producer. <laughs> you, you'll read the. Uh, you're right. Who produced the show? Credit. Yeah. That was a little advertisement. Okay, so we, we've already studied that, and the reason why we didn't we didn't tape it because it would be too complicated because we know that our audience did not probably have a. 
copy of that. Okay. And all so, the information is in that little pamphlet. It's all there. Yeah. It's yeah. Very, very yeah. well detailed for us. Mm -hmm. So let's go to 20. We're, we're going to go. It's going to be quick. Okay. We're, we're, gonna, we're heading toward 32. Just to give us highlights. Amen. Mm -hmm. all right. Everybody with me? Yes. If you're with me, say amen. 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 Okay. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. And here we go. All right. 25. Um, the offerings for the tabernacle. 25. We're in chapter 25. Uh, we we, we kind of did this last week. Just a quick review and, and move forward. The tabernacle. The word tabernacle is called the what? The ark. The glory, the glory the of God. Oh, the the tent of meeting is called oh. the ohel. Mm. O-H-E-L. Right? Mm -hmm. The the tabernacling is the... Um, uh, the uh, Shekinah glory coming. Um, and so we, we can see here that um, God's favorite colors in, in verse 3, 25, 3. Purple, blue, Purple, red. red. Mm -hmm. And verse 4, you ever see them in there? Mm -hmm. And the, the material was a thick material, so it wasn't easy to see through. In some parts it was not easy to see through. Because no one could see God and... Live. 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 Okay. Then the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant in verse 10 was a box four and a half feet by two and a quarter feet by two and a quarter feet. Now inside the Ark of the Covenant, Miss Lane, do you remember what they put inside the Ark of the Covenant? Correct. The Ten Commandments. Very good. Yeah. The manna. The manna. And so now from a Catholic viewpoint, notice inside the Ark of the Covenant is word and sacrament. When you go to church every day, what do you receive? Word, Word and, sacrament. and sacrament. Now here's here's a shock that, again, most Catholics don't know. The Word is equal to the sacrament. Does everybody know that? Yes. yes. So, if you have a Bible in your house, you have something that's so powerfully equal to the Eucharist. Did you ever think about that? Mm -hmm. Now, if you could, would you spend more time in front of the Blessed Sacrament? Yes. Would you? It'd be good. Could you, ma'am? Yeah. Now, how come you don't spend more time in the Word of God? Mm. Because you might say the Word of God is, I don't understand it. Mm. And forgive me about a thousand times. When, you, when I say read the Bible, forgive me. Forgive me for even saying that. And I know this. You don't understand it. I couldn't say you read Exodus 25 because you would call. And then after you read Exodus 25, you know what you would say to yourself? I don't understand this. And then you, then you would say to yourself, I'm my father Bill. Then you would say to yourself, I don't know what it says. And then you would get discouraged and close your book. I, I don't do that. I can't do that. So forgive me. What, 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 I, what I need to say to us is read the Bible and get an explanation of it. And then you go to the other room. Yeah, who? Mm -hmm. Who? So we, we can see that inside it was it was a it was a container, and it is somewhere on the planet right now. Mm. The um, we don't know where, mm. and it will be found. If you want to read in Second Maccabees two, it will be found before the end of time. And why is it important that if it was found right now, I'd be on, I would I would want to be on that 115 flight that took out of Newark at, at uh, this this afternoon. Jesus would be coming. Because <laughs> on there is God wrote it. Imagine imagine having what mm. God wrote on there. Yeah. And so and the manna is the what the bread. What does manna mean again? What is it? <laughs> And when Jesus enters into <clears throat> Jerusalem, Jerusalem, mm -hmm. what does they? What do the people say? Who, Who is, is he? he? Hmm. Hmm. Manna. What is it? Jesus mm -hmm. coming into Jerusalem. Ooh. Who, Who is, is he? he? Does anybody see any connection? Mm -hmm. Any bell just went ding? Oh, there it is. Okay, I just thank you, bell. And mm -hmm. uh, do, do you see any connections going on here? Yes. Miss Helene. So, um, Miss Jackie. So, why was the Bible plan to step in the 
I know that uh, that's the third yeah. thing I want to say. The third thing is authority. Okay. Because in the book of Numbers, chapter 16, um, like when we vote for a president or a congressman, the first night they get in, we're all jumping around. They won, right? We do that every election, right? Mm -hmm. And then a year later we go, Ugh, mm -hmm. who do we put in? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So there, there's, there's a lot of joy over that, but... So they were rebelling because of Moses. Things weren't going their way. So they rose up and said, we need new leadership. But see, see, God is not into a democracy. Democracy is the worst form of government ever devised by man. Because we just want to go to the will of the people. But if the will of the people is living on Mount of corruption, then we can say, right now, we're living on Mount of corruption. Okay, that's why it's important that, that you understand that. We live in the amount of corruption and things are so vile. I mean, those marches last weekend were vile. Yeah. Um, to uh, some of the things they were, they were saying. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's the amount of corruption. Mm -hmm. And that we want what we want. And it's our body, we can do whatever we want with our bodies. Mm -hmm. And we just want this, we want everything that we want, we want one. Mm -hmm. That's the first form of government. Yeah. The government in the Bible is theocracy. Mm -hmm. What God says. Imagine if we had a, a church that went by what God says. Now you're going to say there, allegedly we do. If we have a church by what God says, things would be a whole lot more blessed. Mm -hmm. yes? yes? Because in the Old Testament, the law, the 613 laws, were obligatory. The New Testament teachings are for personal blessings and living in God. Which do you want to go? Obligation? Or the joy of living in God and His blessings. You see the, see the main difference? Uh -huh. yeah. See the main difference between being a Christian and a Jew. But I just want to point that out to you. So this is the section. And, and we pointed out to you last week in verse number 18, the cherubim. Uh, the cherubim were the, um, the second top bananas of the angels. How many uh, choirs of angels are there? Nine. Nine. Nine choirs of angels. <laughs> Eight. Eight, right? And the top were the seraphim. They're mentioned in Isaiah 6. The next group, um, Satan is called even part of the cherubim. Ezekiel 28. So, um, through my studies, I'm like, okay, Lord, you got to help me understand this. Isaiah chapter 6 says seraphim, and then, which is the highest, and the seraphim is called the burning angels. Mm -hmm. Does everybody know when you read Revelation, there were seven uh, uh, flames before the throne of God? Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's the power of the, the that's the flames of, of the power of God. Now, the seraphim angels stand in front of God, and what do they do? They burn. Mm -hmm. They absolutely, now remember when the snakes came out in Numbers chapter 21. They were red snakes and they bit the people in their disobedience. They were called seraph angels. i never seen a red snake and I don't ever want to see a red snake. I don't want to see a blue one, let a green one or whatever color they are. I just don't like those creatures. And I don't think they like me, so there, it's mutual. And uh, so... They came out and they were burning snakes. Mm. Mm. Okay? Yeah. So you can see that in verse 17, you shall make a mercy seat. And that's where we get the mercy. mercy. Now, it was, a, um, it was a seat of gold. And on there, that's where they would put the blood of the lamb. So, when we think of Jesus crucified, what do we think of Jesus crucified, everybody? Where was his throne? The cross. The cross. And so when the blood... you, you got to get this. Are you getting this, man? When the blood is shed on Calvary... How much blood was shed on Calvary? All of it. All of it. He was totally emptied. That's called kenosis. K-E-N-O-S-I-S. -S, kenosis. The totally emptying. And when Jesus was emptying, you got to get this. Is this good stuff you're getting? Yeah. Now watch this. I'm going to say a lot of good things. In that kenosis, the blood was being poured out on the 
mercy seat. So, you have a symbol of your mercy seat when you look at a crucifix. Do you have a crucifix in your house, ma'am? Yes. Yes. And so, then you're looking at a symbol of the mercy seat. Are you getting this? Yes. And that's, now, I particularly um, am in awe of the whole emphasis on the blood. Now, I'm very sad to say, growing up, you did not hear enough or hardly an, a, a reference to the blood of the Lamb. Mm. Because, but should we emphasize the blood of the Lamb? Yes. Yes. And just, just for your FYIing, there is a whole month called, uh, in July, it's called the Precious Blood Month. But guess what? Guess who tells you about that? Nobody. I mean, mm -hmm. um, all the conferences I've preached at and been to, I would like one conference to be on the blood mm -hmm. of the Lamb. That would be that would be my suggestion. In the past, was it more celebrated? No. Mm. Would you know mm. that? So um, I would like to have a a whole month of just the blood of the mm. lamb. Mm. We're going to do Saint Teresa and the Jew again, okay? Amen. Mm -hmm. And then we'll do Saint Joseph being do do the. But there, there's something great about the blood of the lamb. What do you think, ma'am? So uh, if you if you uh, if you see that there, make one cherub on the end, and the cherub were the uh, what? The angels. There's a second group of angels, and they are connected to um, the second group, and also Ezekiel 28. If you put in there, okay. I just want to show you that. Amen. Look at verse 21. You shall put the mercy seat on the top of the ark, and um, on the top of the uh, ark, and in the ark you shall put the covenant that I will make with you. So what's the covenant? The Ten Commandments. That's why they're so famed. That's why they're so known. That's why they're so... Can't erase them. And that is the very, very, very... What, what's the Ark of the Covenant? The Ark of uh, the Covenant that God makes with us. If you remember when we studied Exodus 24, when the blood was applied, it says the covenant. What is the covenant that God makes with you? that you live for Him. All right, now, for, that you live for Him, what do you got to do to live for Him? How do I live for Him? And so that's why we always teach, uh, if you go to grammar school or you go over here and you teach Sunday school, what do the kids hear about every single year? The Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. You know, I teach fourth grade, Ten Commandments. I teach 6th grade, 10 commandments. I teach the 8th grade, 10 commandments. And every year they get a 10 commandment test. Because you got to know them. They, they should be, you know, really, that's your covenant with God. So what does God want me to do? All right, I love God. I'm redeemed by the Lord. All right, now how do I live that? I need a covenant. So what's the signature of your covenant? The 10 commandments. You know, when you go to certain restaurants, they'll say, our signature pie, our signature dinner, our Fish. signature drink. Mm. Well, this is your signature. Mm. Because the blood was there. Now, when the priest goes in, what we believe happened is this. He had 12 jewels on his chest. Right? The, mm. the, it was the ephod and coming down, mm -hmm. representing the 12 tribes. tribes. Everybody follow so far? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We saw that on our... We saw that on our... Um, study. Mm -hmm. Now each of the tribes had a different jewel on there mm -hmm. because they're jewels of the priest. Mm -hmm. When the priest would go in once a year on Yom Kippur. Everybody remember? Mm -hmm. And we're going to really break that down for you. When it goes in on Yom Kippur, an interesting thing happens. God does speak audibly to one main person, Moses. Does he speak audibly to everybody? No. No. So how does the priest, who was the second priest, or the, became the high priest? Aaron. Why does the Moses become the high priest? Because he disobeyed God when he didn't circumcise his son properly in Exodus 4. 
and his wife Zipporah circumcised him. So it took a lady to circumcise her son. Because if she didn't do that, they would have been cut off even before they got to talk to the Pharaoh. Interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And interesting too because what kind of animal does Moses ride on? These are little tidbits that you don't pick up. He rides on a donkey. Mm -hmm. Everybody goes, hmm. Mm -hmm. And then Solomon um, rides on a donkey. donkey. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus rides on a Don donkey. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Miss Jackie, are you getting all this? Yeah. Are you seeing all the connections? Mm -hmm. Now, when the high priest goes in, once a year, mm -hmm. with all the jewels, representing the priesthood. Now, when you go to heaven, are you going to heaven, ma'am? Mm -hmm. By God's grace, when you go to heaven, you are a priest, and on all of the doors of heaven are these jewels. Mm -hmm. And there will be no knitting in heaven, ma'am. <laughs> So there's 12 doors thing? Didn't you say that though the floors would be like? The floors would be glass. Mm. They're not going to be wood like this. Mm. They're going to be a glass floor and everything will be in the reflective power of grace. Mm. Wow. Can you imagine grace yeah. bouncing all over the place? Wow. Now the other thing I want to say before I forget is that when you're inside, your faith in Christ is born inside the Holy of Holies. Now, when God began to talk to the high priest, how many times? Once. Once. When he began to talk, here's what the Jews believe. On his chest, a message appeared and that's how we would read what God was saying. And it was just like a one word message, right? Well, they used mm -hmm. to have a process of judging called the Urim and the Thummim, yeah. the white stone and the black stone. God, what are you saying and what stone will I, will I pick out? But it was yes or no questions, right? Yeah. yeah. I guess you can hold the conversation yes or no, but yeah. you, you, The twelve jewels. You said that that represents the priesthood, but it's the priesthood of each of the tribes, or not? It yeah. represents the different tribes, right? Okay, just to show you some tidbits there. So if you look at verse 22, there I will meet with you. So you can only meet God in mercy. We did that last week. We're not going very far this week. Verse 23, you shall make a table of acacia wood, and it had to be all in gold, because gold is a sign of the kingship. We three kings, right? Remember that? Mm -hmm. yep. Verse 31, you shall make a lampstand of pure gold. Now, uh, again, you got the whole idea of the menorah. Mm -hmm. Everybody know what a menorah is? Yes. Now, on how many branches is on it? Seven. Seven. One All right, the branches. Six, seven, six. six, and then the one in the center. Hold oh, yeah. on. Okay. Then in the, in the center, um, they would have these little uh, extensions called lips, L-I-B-S, and that's where they would flow the oil through. So oil was very, very important. Uh, oil is an outpouring of the spirit. Oil is an outpouring of, of lighting the way. So oil is very important because it's an anointing. Mm -hmm. And when you are anointed, you become priest, prophet, and, and, king. and king. So if you uh, underline there, verse 31, uh, look at verse number 32. And there shall be six branches going out of its sides, three branches on the lampstand, out of one side of it, three branches on the lampstand. So on the other, three cups made like almonds, and almonds is what, what butted forth from the what? The rod of Aaron. Each with capital and flower, each with branch, 
And so, when you put all and that, that the main stem coming through, you would have what is called what Paul, what we would believe is called the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And if you want to read about that, please read Isaiah eleven two. Good stuff. Good stuff. And then the most important part is twenty six is the tabernacle. And you can see more of you shall make the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine twined linen and purple and scarlet stuff. So there's the, there's the, um, colors. So the, uh, and skillfully worked you shall make them. So there was laying pat making all of them there. <laughs> and then the framework, uh, framework verse 15 had to be very, very strong and sturdy. And uh, the bars were made out of acacia wood. And then very important, verse 31, the veil. And what happens when Jesus died on the cross? It tore. It tore. It tore. Now the veil is very, very what? Thick. 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 Now from a Catholic viewpoint, it's strongly believed, if you go all the way back, that the Blessed Mother prepared the veil. It was very, very thick. Now, going in an old-fashioned Catholic church, if you remember, um, they used to have big veils in the church. You don't remember that? Yes. And I kind of still like that. Amen? Mm -hmm. I remember, yes. maybe now and yes. then you might run into one or two of them along the way. Mm -hmm. A gigantic curtain. Mm -hmm. Does anybody remember? Yeah. A humongous curtain. Mm -hmm. I remember my church, uh, a humongous curtain. And I just... Uh, when they, when they took that curtain down, uh, in my local church I screamed, oh mm -hmm. my heavens. Mm -hmm. When they remodeled our church, mm -hmm. Jesus looked like a little skinny, little, uh, mm -hmm. you, didn't, you didn't even know there was a person on that, you know? Uh -huh. it, it was just like, <laughs> and little lights were coming out from, I mean, it's mm -hmm. just a, uh -huh. uh, a terrible depiction. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think we got much sanctity out of that, looking at that direction. Mm -hmm. But they took around that, that beautiful curtain. And when I was a pastor in St. Antoninus, and it's still there, they have a gigantic curtain. On the altar? Uh, way back, I mean, yeah, it's from floor behind. to ceiling. Yeah. It's very, it's very, very high. Mm -hmm. Is it behind the tabernacle? Was it? Yeah, the tabernacle's right in front of it. Mm -hmm. and, and so, I mean, to me, that's that's the way, uh, way it mm -hmm. really depicts a lot of good mm -hmm. stuff here. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. The veil, verse 31, shall be made of blue and purple and scarlet. See, God's favorite colors again? Mm -hmm. Purple. And fine twine linen, its skill work shall be made with cher see the cherubim again? Mm -hmm. And you shall hang at four pillars of acacia, um, acacia overlaid with gold. Everything was gold because it had to be so what? Precious. precious. Very, very precious. Now, remember when, you, when we go into this, there has to be some places. You shall bring, hang the veil from the clasp and bring the Ark of the Covenant there within the veil. And so the veil shall, if you underline there, verse number 20, 33, you sh shall separate for you the holy place from the most holy. Now, I'm, I'm old fashioned, forgive, forgive me, but I don't really apologize. The holy place, again, is when you sit in, the, in, in your pews and you stare out like some people just stare. You know? That's, how many know you're in the holy place? But what, what has our holy place turned into recently? Everybody's talking. It's so mm. noisy. Then the altar is called the what? The most holy place. The old-fashioned person in me likes the idea of um, a separation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the separation is through a couple of stairs of elevation. Mm. I've been in congregations where, of course, the congregation has beautiful children, but they're always running around. Mm -hmm. You know, kids just want to take off, and, and they're up on the altar, and, and no, no, that's, that's the most holy spot. And what I see, sadly, is with the Blessed Sacrament front and center in there, it should be incredible. Oh, mm -hmm. I don't see that. I don't see it in most of our churches. The awe for the Blessed Sacrament. Amen? Amen. I, and so yeah. there should be, when we go to this 
um, dynamic, it should be the holy spot and then the most holy. This is called the Kedushim, the Kedushim. You remember Gadosh? Q A D O S H? Gadosh? But this is the Godoshim, the most holy. Okay? So, uh, the old fashioned in me, uh, now that I understand this, we needed that separation. Yeah. And in our churches now, we basically have lost that. The altar veil used to be the separation, right? Yes. Yeah. You got it. Yes. And then what would we do years ago when we made communion? We would kneel yeah. there because we were in the holy place yes. right. and we know that we couldn't go up to the, holy place. Right. the most holy place. Now, I do understand and I want to be an obedient son to the church. I understand your baptism. I understand it's your right to go up there. I understand it's your right to give out communion. I understand all of that. Um, but the way it's done today, I believe it's called sloppy. Agape. Agape, agape is the word for love. It's sloppy love. I, I love a little more reverence. And I think very easily, if you want to bring people back to church, show reverence. I agree. Second, show joy. Um, mm -hmm show reverence and joy, the people will be back. Yep. Because they want their church in joy and reverence before God. Amen? Amen. Are you getting all this? Yeah. So a lot, a, lot, a lot of people do. I hear that frequently. Yeah. They really do, but we can't do anything about it. Well, if, if the good pastor and the people kind of set the tone, mm -hmm. we can sort of swing things back. Amen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... This this is what this is what they did. Now, verse chapter twenty seven, we have the altar of burning offerings, that would be called the what, the holocaust. That's in verses one to eight. We have the court and the hangings. Um, in order to uh, chapter twenty seven, verse twenty, there had to be a lot. It was a very oily oily uh, experience, wasn't it? Okay. You shall command. Look at uh, chapter twenty seven, verse twenty. You shall command the sons of Israel that they bring to you pure beaten olive uh, of oil for the light. If you underline that, verse 20. Uh, that's why Jesus had to go where? Gethsemane. Gethsemane. How, how many call it? In the Mount of what? Olives. Olives. Mm. Have you ever heard that before? Yeah. Now, what kind of oil were you getting there? Olive oil. Olive. Pure oil the best. Now the watch best. this. Now this is good stuff. Turn to the person next to you. You're getting good stuff. You're getting good stuff. Now when you get this good stuff, here, here's what I want to share with us. Is the word Gethsemane. Has everybody heard of it? Yes. yes. Um, Gethsemane in one level means oil press. But that's, that's not enough. To get oil, you had to take all the olives. Ooh. You don't mm. eat them. Don't ever eat an olive. I love them. Delish. Ooh, love Yum. Delish. Delish. And you put them in a <laughs> circular cement. And then there, there would be a big, gigantic cement stone mm. that was called Gethsemane. Mm. Mm. Oh, the, stone. Wow. the stone would get semini mm. the press it. Ah. Yeah, it would mm. press down the olives. the, the yeah. olives mm. and then when they you know the shells were still you know when they opened and they they burst out mm -hmm. yeah and then they had a a kind of a uh, like a ramp where all the oil would start to flow out. Oh. Now, but there was a problem. Some of the shells were still left. left. So what would you have to do? You would have to put down that very hard cement, roll it around. That would be the Gethsemane. <coughs> now, some of you were in that church and you had mass in there. Yeah. Does anybody remember having mass inside that church? Were yes. you in there, ma'am? Yes. 
Were you in there, ma'am? I missed it. You missed it. Were you in there, ma'am? Next one. All right now, to me, just, just, just is for me. That was for me. That was uh, for me the most special mass we had in the Holy Land. Yes. Mm. Mm. After that mass, I was like, "Wow." Mm. In fact, in that church where we're all listening, I don't know if, if if you saw me looking at you, you were like, it was a deafening, holy mm -hmm. silence. I remember you sat, you sat in the Holy of Holies. Remember, and you heard about Jesus being Gethsemane. Yes. On that spot, you know, ma'am, you were on the spot. On that spot <laughs> where you were sitting, do you remember sitting there? Yes. On that spot where you were sitting, that's where Jesus' head opened and blood started coming out. That's where, that's where the passion began. Now, he started in Gethsemane because it started coming out. But it would not be fully out until the scourging and the total crucifixion. And then it all came out. He was being he pressed. pressed. He was being pressed. So the olive yes. press. So when Jesus falls down to pray, when Jesus falls, it's called a mother praying for their son. When Jesus falls down to pray, he, the, the Gethsemane starts. And so what happens then is that has to go all the way around, all the way around, until the shells are no longer exist. Mm -hmm. Until yeah. it's pure oil. Mm -hmm. wow. wow. Now that oil is going to be used to light the way at the temple. Mm -hmm. So when you go to church, you get the best oil. Mm -hmm. Now... For you to have the best oil in church, I'm giving you a, a day of recollection right now. You've got to really be living in the faith without sin. Mm -hmm. And then the oil will explode in the whole place and you will light up the place. Mm -hmm. What would happen if everybody enjoyed that kind of oil? Now, now let me go fast forward to Luke 24. On the road to Emmaus. Were not our hearts burning within us? Now why were their hearts burning within? Because it was the oil of their lives was lit. Oh, that's beautiful. No longer was it in the temple. And what did they do when they saw Jesus risen? They turned around and they walked back to the temple in Jerusalem. Are you getting all this? Mm -hmm. Are you seeing all the connections now? Are you crossing the T's? Are you seeing this, ma'am? Mm -hmm. So, let's look at these verses. I thought it was going to be on 32 tonight, but I guess that's not going to happen. <laughs> and you shall command the sons of Israel that they bring to you pure beaten olive oil for the light, mm -hmm. that a lamp may be set up to burn what does it say there? Continually. Now, underline that. Everybody see that? Continually? Hello? What happens in your church right now? There it is. There it is. So, inside the Gadoshim, what's the Gadosh? The holy place. What's the Gadoshim? The most holy. So, what's going, what went on in the most holy of the Gadoshim? is what was going on is the lamp was burning continually. What kind of oil? It came in from Gethsemane. Now, some more information, but we'll get this one as we study the hills of Jerusalem too. Are you learning anything now? Now, who started that walk through Gethsemane? David. Second Samuel 15. And, and then he, he, he was barefoot and he went, by the way, more FYI, you know, you're the only one on your block that knows this man. In Gethsemane was the favorite retreat house and prayer you could ever have. 
That's why I say to you often, I don't know if you're, you read in between my lines, we are all in the school of Gethsemane. Mm -hmm. So you go to church and you stare because you're a mother. How many ever stared because of your interesting kids? Anybody ever have interesting kids? Oh, yes. And then did, how many mothers ever went to a church and you just did this? <laughs> <laughs> you just did it. <laughs> well, this is a little different stare. You start to look like Bella Lugosi. <laughs> <laughs> you just start to stare. Okay. Bella, Bella Lugosi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are, are, are you getting this? So, <laughs> You hear me say all the time, what is the name of our school? It's And by the way, you're in Gethsemane whether you like it or not. I have no choice. You have no choice. If you decide, well, I don't want to go to that school, you're in it. No choice. And when are you getting out? You're not. You're in it till the day the Lord calls you to glory. This is Gethsemane, baby, so you might find yourself doing this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You'll be glad when you can take the little one and say, Zelita, bedtime. And you just go, Shh. Zelita. Zelita. <laughs> okay, are you getting this? Little Zelly. And the ten of the meeting, are, are you learning it too, Mrs.? Verse 21. In the ten of the meeting, outside the veil where it's before the covenant, so it's got to be continually burning. Now, what really lights up the church is the continual menorah. How do you say menorah in Hebrew? Menorah, very good. So, the, the, word, the word here is not lamp. You gotta, you gotta look at it in Hebrew. Please, everybody, put on your Hebrew glasses now. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. It's menorah. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I told you about a million times. Inside the word menorah, menorah, the word is O R, light. The or. What's the first words out of God's mouth that we hear recorded? Let, let, let there, there be, be light. light. So we said that in a Hebrew sense, light. let there be or. Oh, my goodness. Now, let's go on to another level. Are you enjoying all these levels? Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you go into the temple slash your Catholic church. Ready? This is mind-boggling. Turn to the first next that You're going to hear a good fact. You're going to hear a good fact. When you go into there, or now into your local Catholic church, you are seeing the new creation right before you. Because there is the or in there. Are you getting this yet? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you saying, mm -hmm, ma'am? It's mm -hmm. the new what? Creation. New creation. Hmm. Mm. Everybody go, hmm. Mm. Mm. Aaron, and, Aaron and his sons shall be tended from evening to morning. Now what does it say, evening to morning? It's the new day. The new day doesn't start at midnight. It starts when the sun sets. So if you're Jewish, what's very important, you've got to do the Shema. Hero Israel, when the sun rises. Hmm. What, what, what do you got to do when the sun sets? Shema. Yeah. Everybody go, hmm. hmm. How do you spell that? S H E M A. And that's the prayer in Deuteronomy 6 49. Everybody go, hmm. 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 So if you circle there, evening to morning, that's the brand new day. Everybody go, hmm. hmm. Now, if you were to backward forward, if you go to Genesis 1, after every day was created, what would you say? Then oh, well. evening came, mm -hmm. and, then, and then the morning. Hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Is this making, is this good stuff now? Yes. Hmm. And then it shall be a statue forever to be observed through their generations by the sons of Israel. Next. And this is where I really can't complain. I won't complain online. I'll complain to you afterwards if you want to hear my complaint. There's got to be proper clothes. I hear it said, God doesn't care what you wear to church. If that's the only outfit you have, wear it. If that's the best you have, wear it. If you look like uh, Mrs. and Mr. Hobo, mm -hmm. that's it. That's all you have, wear it. But if you have better and you give God that, oh. Now, just as an aside, there's a lot of churches coming up now where it's called like the liquid church. Mm -hmm. Well, they want to, and even the ministers, everybody's dressing down. Mm -hmm. Because they don't want to say, I'm in a jacket and tie, and you're in your schlapola. Mm -hmm. And you really can't dictate to what people wear to church. I'm not here to dictate to what you're wearing. But what we do wear represents the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Now those with a mentality say, this is, this is it, too bad, this is the... Uh, and a lot of, let's, let's be honest, a lot of them really do look like five minutes... They rolled out of bed five minutes ago, right? Mm, yeah. they, and guess what? You talk to them and guess what they said? I was embedded five minutes ago. <laughs> <coughs> so they really look like that. I think we should be a little more awake for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Now, there should be, and this is where I get critical, uh, and I won't, but you could read in between my lines. When we go to church... You are not allowed to have, and this is a review of the, those sheets we're doing, you are not allowed to have any part of your flesh showing. That's what I was exactly. The only part of your flesh, of course, is your face, your hands, mm. and your feet. Because they didn't have socks back then, right? Mm. And what they would do is they would take their feet. When the sandals were made, I told you, they would put it on lamb skin or goat skin so do you remember that line in Exodus 3 when the Lord says take off your sandals and by the way maybe you'd say shoes they didn't have shoes like we have shoes take off your sandals this is holy ground and the reason why is because when I wore my sandals the, the, the sandal was extremely open so when, when I was walking around Palestine in the first century, you would see my little tootsies and my corns, if I had any corns on, okay? Yeah. I, I don't mean any corn, I mean... I know. <laughs> okay, so you, 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 you would see it. So, what, what you would have is basically those sandals were to help me to get through the hot sand and the stones that were might be around, and I'm sure there were tons of them. But when Moses is up on the mountain in Exodus 3, take the sandals off because it was a dead animal. So nothing of death could come near God. Now, fast forward, John the Baptist, I am not worthy to take his sandals off. Are you getting all these little pictures now? Hmm. So far that a woman's legs shouldn't even be shown. No. But what about a dress? You could wear tights. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh. What hap here's here's um a long dress. here's yeah, an long understanding dress. is um mm -hmm. again, I don't want to dictate how anybody right. dresses. Yeah. Right. And forgive me, I don't want to look upon anybody how you dress. But sometimes in summertime my eyes go. Mm. <laughs> And I could hear what they say. Yeah. Madam, why are you wearing that? You better thank God I'm here and I'm not coming back. As long as I put the envelope in. Mm. That's the kind of attitude they would say to me. Mm. Exactly. That's what I was told. And um, they, wow. they, so, what, as I understand Scripture, somebody said, well, that's Old Testament. 
let's let's follow through. In the Old Testament, which is the Bible, which is also I believe the New Testament, no flesh glorifies the Lord. I cannot glorify God. What are we doing to our flesh right now? We paint it. We lipstick it. We we look like uh, the Sioux Indians coming through uh, downtown Middletown. Amen. And some some of the lady says, "If I didn't put this on, you'd be scared what you saw before." Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Okay. Is that a sin? No. I'm not saying anything like that. No. 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 But I'm saying is the flesh will not glorify God. Amen. 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 Now today I just did a, a, a wake and then the funeral mass. I went. I saw the lady in the coffin. She's 92. Mm. She really was a knockout way before that. Mm. And when I looked at 92, I said, what a difference. Mm. What a difference. So that's why mm. when you're 92, the inner beauty has to really come out. Mm -hmm. Only Sarah, when she was 89, she looked like a knockout. Mm -hmm. She looked like better than Elizabeth Taylor, I'll tell you that much, mm. amen. <laughs> so so she, was, she was a real knockout. Mm -hmm. And uh, even at 89. But as we get older... What's your name? Okay. So, um, as I understand Zechariah 2, flesh will not glorify God. So that's why my role before you is I will never wear less than what's required of me. So sometimes someone will say to me, throw a stole on, just come and mm. co-celebrate. You know what you say, the co mm. No, I don't do it like that. I do it the right way, or no way. Mm. Oh, go ahead. No, no, you can just, no. Mm. That's why when you say, let's have a mass on that coffee table. Mm. No. Mm. No, there's got to be a better decorum. I don't know if you agree with me or disagree with me. Mm, You're a conservative group, so you agree. But I have people, oh, God doesn't care. Then I hear that, God doesn't mm -hmm. care. Yes, he does. Yes, I believe. He does. I do too. Mm -hmm. Yes, he does. So, how should you dress in church? You should be properly presented before God. You should be properly presented before God. Amen? Amen. You should be wearing holy, holy decorum. That's a long explanation. Um, I know with this liquid church and everything else, uh, everybody's dressing down now. Mm. But from the signal that I've got, I never heard anybody say dress down. Mm. Because I'm going into the Holy of Holies, literally, and I cannot show any flesh except you see my hands and my incredible face. Mm. <laughs> and that's it. That's all you see. And the rest has got to be covered because my flesh has sinned. My face has sinned. My hands have sinned. Lord, that's why with the hands... Lord, I don't want any stain of blood on them. Mm. That's why David could not be the king who put the ark in, mm. because there was blood on his hands. Mm -hmm. That's a long explanation. Amen? Good was it God. worth it? Yeah, yes. yes. All right, let's look at the Holy Garments, chapter 20. This is just very brief. Oh, my heavens, I say very brief. We're still going. Mm. Then bring near. Now, underline bring near. Near, near means worship. Have you ever heard that expression, draw near? Mm -hmm. Yesterday we heard Jesus say, come to me, come after me. Mm -hmm. Now, so what, is it, what did Jesus also mean when he says, come to me? It means come to worship. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody underline that verse one. Mm -hmm. Come near to, uh, bring near to your Aaron, your brother, and your sons with him. From among the sons of Israel to serve me as priest. Now the priest, the word in Hebrew, you remember the word in Hebrew, kohanim? Anybody ever hear that? You never heard of Dr. Cohen? You never heard of Dr. Cohen before? Mm -hmm. Well, he's definitely not your. Eileen, is he your doctor? No, how do you spell it? Cohen? C O H E N, Cohen. Cohen. Or, with a K, K O H E N, Cohen. Okay. Cohen is a priest? Yes. Like Aaron? What's that? The Cohenites. Is there a Cohenites? Cohathites. Cohathites. Okay. <laughs> Aaron and his Aaron sons, Nadab, Nabihu, Eliezer, and Ithamar. What a name, Ithamar. <laughs> And you shall make holy garments of your underlying there, verse number two, for Aaron your brother, for glory and for beauty. Okay, mm. underline that. 
Remember, how do you say glory in Hebrew? Remember, we've been through that word a thousand times. Kabod. Kabod. Very good. K A B O D. K A B O D. Kabod. Everybody say kabod. Kabod. Now, so what kind of garments should you have on? The best. The best. Now, we've been criticized for wearing. Oh, those Catholics look. They want money. Look at the garments they wear. The garments should be beautiful. Mm -hmm. But the Baptists, they go all out with the hats. And they uh, understand that? Because this is for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Lord of Lords. Lord of Lords. Okay? Yeah. Now, what do we do is, if there's countries in Africa, which I've already sent as a pastor, I sent some of our older garments that we don't use anymore to the mission fields. Mm -hmm. And every time I become pastor, mm -hmm. And I look at the wardrobe, and I look in there, and I'm like, mm. that's ugly. Then you have to buy new. <laughs> and so what I do seasonally, I'll say, well, which I've already done in St. Antoninus, I said, Saint, um, Resurrection Sunday is coming. And let me buy a cope. Everybody know what a cope is? That long, when, you, when you do adoration, mm -hmm. you got to wear a long, mm. a long gown. Mm -hmm. Everybody see that? It's, it's like a long cape. Mm -hmm. It's called a cope. Mm -hmm. C-O-P-E. Did you ever see that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Do you know when I go to a lot of churches now? And what I do is, when I go to Florida in a couple of weeks, uh, we have Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. And I always wear a cope in St. Matthew's, where I'll have the chasuble on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's that long garment. you got to wear a cope when you do... Uh, when you do benediction. Mm -hmm. It's it's not the white garment. It's, it's the, the long the cape. Yes. Oh, the long cape. It's the long the cape. The white garment's oh, yeah. the... Okay. Oh. And so what I did oh. when I was a Santa tonight is yeah. I spent seven eight hundred dollars I went a little pricey. But it's... And I said, it. but it's for adoration. Yeah. So yeah. I bought yeah. that. Yeah. Nobody said to me, why did you spend eight hundred dollars on it? No. Because no. through my ministry, we were... Respect for God. We yeah. were... By selling CDs around the around the world, we were bringing in the money, and so um, that's what I that that's what I got. So, mm -hmm. and when I go to San Antoninus periodically, or I still see that cope there. Mm. I don't know if they ever cleaned it since uh, mm. since I I've been there or whatever. It's some beautiful garment, and so what I do too is I look at the golds and the greens and the whites, and mm -hmm. sometimes I say, mm. mm. all right, for Christmas. I'll get a new white garment, or mm -hmm. for Advent I'll get a a good uh, purple one, or or Pentecost Sunday we'll get a beautiful red one. So it, it a lot of times mm -hmm. when I when I'm coming up the aisle, especially it's a woman thing. It's a woman thing. Hey, you got a new haircut? They always they, <laughs> they'll tell you, you got a new haircut. The women are always oh, telling you got a haircut. And and the second thing is they'll say, oh, your 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 garment is really beautiful. I never heard a guy say to me, on a Sunday, right. your garment is beautiful. That's right. This is true. <laughs> never heard, and I never But you know what they really are. And I never, really I never heard a guy yeah. say, oh, you got a haircut. <laughs> never heard a guy say, it's, it's a woman thing. Okay? Yeah. Okay. okay. I think the guys see it, but they're like, oh, God. Yeah. So, right. so let's go through this. So now, mm -hmm. if you circle those two words there, it's for what? Glory? Worship. So what do you, we're supposed to now? What does the word glory mean again? Wait. Wait. Very good. W e i g h t. Wait. And for beauty. Yeah. So you're supposed to say uh, like the women do. That's really beautiful. And I always tell you, nice. ladies, I made it last night. Oh. <laughs> Amen. But God is beauty. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. I call in my own little pet peeve way with God. I say. God, I call you the other side of beauty. Amen. Anytime I see something yeah. really, really Ooh, beauty. Yeah. Like I remember being walking in Wyoming mm -hmm. and I saw the Grand Tetons, mm -hmm. the snow caps, and then the beautiful valley with all the flowers. And I just said, God, you are the other side of beauty. Amen. Like, this I is so that. beautiful. Right. Well, I can't imagine what you are, Lord. Amen. So right then I, I coined a phrase for God. I, I called God. God, you're the other yeah. side of beauty. Wow. You coined that phrase? So do, really do you good. see the two, the two words? So what should happen when you go in church? Glory, Glory. and beauty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not 
schlappel and more schlappel. Hmm. So that's why there should be reverence. That should be. Uh, that's why years ago we would take our, our Saturday night bath. Mm -hmm. We would go to con we'd go to confession the day before, and we wear our clothes, mm -hmm. and, and then we would we would take our weekly shower. Yeah. Or a monthly shower, whatever your shower you're up to, and then, then what we would do when we come back, we would have our Sunday dinner, yeah. and that was always the best two dinner all yeah around two o'clock <laughs> right, right. Mm. two o'clock we would have our Sunday dinner, everybody was there, everybody looked forward to the meal. Yeah. And in fact, I would remember my mother. My mother preparing the Sunday meal the night before. Mm. Every Saturday night, mm. there was something on that stove mm. in my house mm. preparing for... Uh, my mother always was doing the cooking the night before <laughs> because she worked and mm. we were three little guys. And, uh, you know, like Friday it would be like a pizza or a tuna sandwich because back then you didn't eat meat on Friday. Right. So, yeah. um, so we'd get our tuna sandwich or... Oh, you, know, you know, you know, it's very, very famous, very, very famous in our house, extremely famous, maybe in your house. No, no, was the English muffin pizzas. You know, oh, you know Thomas is yeah. some and then you got the mozzarella, and then you got the yeah. 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 little so squirt of that oil on. So, I mean, I, I think in my earlier days, I ate three million pieces of oh, Thomas no. English muffin yeah. uh, oh, mozzarella specials. Right? That was outrageous in his house. Okay, j just so you know, we all had those. Okay, good stuff? Yes, Verse 3, And you shall speak to all who have ability, whom I have endowed with uh, the um, with able mind, that they make Aaron's rods, uh, garments. I like the word garments. What's that word, Miss Pat? Beged. Very good. Thank I you, I didn't Pat. know that. B-E-G-E-D. Beged. Bedegim. B-E-G-E-D-I-M. Begedim. Begedim is the garments. Begeds, B E G E D, the begeds. Begeds got it, right? I didn't know that. Yes, you did, but you forgot mm. because you're, you're doing other things with your interesting life. And I'm making they garments. make Aaron's garments to come <laughs> consecrated for my priesthood. Now, priesthood means direct access, access to God. Yeah. Are you all priests in this room? Yes. 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 Have you been told that? Yes. Yes. Do you know what that means? No. But yes. I'm trying to tell you what it means. Direct now. access. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get you into knowing that you are a priest. I should do a whole Bible study just on your priest. I priesthood. thought we were saints. And we're you're saints that too. We're both. You, you, are, you are so much, Miss Peggy, I can't even handle what you are. I'll tell you, you're so good. She is. I'll second the motion. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I've endowed you with a mind that make. So if you're underlining that there, these are the yeah. garments which they shall make a breastplate, an effort, a robe, a coat, a checker. Checker work, a turban, and a sash. Do you think they were covered? Yes. yes. Do you think they got the point? Yes. Yep. That's an F5 again. They shall make holy garments, the begadim, the. So, how do you say that, Miss Pat? Begadim. And the begadim, the ha, kadushim. Begadim. Be Thank you, Miss Pat. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for her interesting uh, paying attention right now. <laughs> <laughs> for Aaron, your brother, and his sons to serve, and then the effort. Okay, everybody remember what the effort is? Yeah. Yes. And then the, then the breast, breast place. You shall receive gold, blue, and purple. There's the and scarlet stuff and fine twine. And they shall make the effort of gold, of blue, and purple, and of fine twine. Skillfully, it shall have two shoulder pieces. Okay, everybody know what the effort is? The shoulder piece? No, no. Because they're carrying. Now, what's going to be the effort is going to be the cross. The shoulder piece, right? It shall have two shoulder pieces mm -hmm. attached to two edges that join together, and it shall be carefully woven upon it. On I could just see Pat in the Old Testament. I would love it. Now, yeah. yeah, I'd love I, it. Pat yeah. would be making it now. I told you before that the high priest garment we we figured out was with all the stuff that was worth one garment was worth sixty four thousand dollars. Yep. And they only wore it once. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how many would like to make a garment? Well, Mrs., did you ever get married? How many times did you wear your wedding dress? Oh, yeah. Once. Once. Did anybody here wear your wedding garment twice? Mm -hmm. You did. 
Mm. I put on every anniversary. <laughs> 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 she was screaming. What a sweet Secrets are coming out. <laughs> <laughs> and when was the last time you put it on? <laughs> So they only put this on when they went into the Holy of Holies. Yeah. What did they wear a few other times? And was it the other priests got to wear certain garments too, or no? But you got you got to wait till they come to Jerusalem. Okay. This is out in the desert. Okay. That's the other. Yeah, they they wore they wore garments. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Are, are you getting any thrills in your life? <laughs> and then then if you go down to verse number nine, and you shall take. Two onyx stones are grape on the names of the sons of Israel, underline verse 9, underline verse 10. Six of their names are on the one stone, yeah. and the names of the remaining six on the other stone, in order of their birth. birth. Interesting. Mm -hmm. In order, when they got born into the world, to born, and then on when they're mm -hmm. on that the new stone. Now, have we ever heard of the book of Revelation? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go to Revelation 2, 16 and 17, it says you'll get a new stone with your name mm -hmm. on it. Now you know where that came from. Got a headstone? No, not that kind of stone. Got a new stone with your name. Some people want us to go pick out our headstones already. And you know what I'm going to put on my headstone? I told you I'm going to put on my headstone. I told you I was sick. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> Jackie's still trying to figure that one out. I know, she's so, so intense. <laughs> so the names on the stones are the sons of Israel, the tribes. But anyway, when you read Revelation 2, 16 and 17, okay. we, get, we get our name on the stone. Mm -hmm. On the new stone. On the new stone. Are you getting this? You like connections? Jesus. Are you glad we're doing this interesting review here? Yes. Yep. Now, if you underline their birth number 10, according to their birth, so who's the first stone? Hmm. Reuben, very good. Hmm. Who's the fourth stone? Judah. 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 All right, if you want to read the names of the stones, uh, Genesis 49. Genesis 49. Now, interestingly, and our time is up too. We've been going for it um, a long time now. Um, when you look at the stones of the apostles, Peter, for the most part, is mentioned first. For the most part, right? Yes. And Judas is always mentioned last. last. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's right. What I want to mm. do one night is, I, I think I showed this, but I really want to give you a little more detail. I want to show you something very interesting, how the apostles' names are written. Or I should show that to you. Mm. Very interesting how the apostles' names are put together. When you look at them in all mm. the different locations, in Acts and Matthew, um, Mark and Luke, not, not in John, John doesn't have mm. them all. Yeah. Uh, when you see how they're all lined up, they're, the, they're lined up three, 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 three. Mm. Oh. Why are they lined up three, 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 three? They're lined up that way because the first three are the closest to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't mean Jesus loved the first three more than the other nine. No, mm -hmm. what that means is the first three thought him out, sought him out more than the others mm -hmm. did. Oh, okay, okay. Like we, we know when we go to church on Sunday, mm -hmm. we're surrounded by a lot of holy people. Now they may not pray as much or come to Bible study, even though we invite them, no, I don't, I don't want to do that. And we know they're holy and we know they're on the way to God and going to heaven. We know all that. But we might be considered the three here and then they would be the three there. And then maybe they have family members who are just eking by and they would be the three over there. Mm. So when you, look at, when you look at the apostles the next time, and I think we just heard it this week, Again, the list when we go through the gospel, yeah. the gospels uh, throughout the year, we go through Mark's gospel, we go through Luke's gospel, we go through Matthew's gospel, and then when you hear that reading, pay attention next time. The first three are the closest, and the next three are the next closest, and the next three are the next. Mm. So, not that you would go and say, "Oh, let, let me see 
who uh, who was really on the outs. No, I, I don't mean that. It's not the mm. that's not the message I'm, I'm mm. trying to leave with us. The message mm. is those who really were. I, I'm always thinking, where would I be on that list of uh, the twelve apostles? And all of, all of you would say, I want the first three. And that's where the first three go up where? Mount Tabor. Mm. The other nine didn't make it. Judas did not go up to Mount Tabor. Mm. They didn't take the taxi ride with us on the top. Do you remember that taxi ride, man? Mm. Okay. That's a long way up. Mm. Scary. And Ir Irma was going, mm. Irma. Narrow, narrow way up. Okay, amen. <laughs> so just for, just for your information. Okay, good stuff. Did you anything new tonight? Yes. Vale la pena? Was it worth it, Mrs. Uh, yeah. You know the Eucharistic prayer that you wanted the four or whatever that you were able to say, and it has all the listing of all those. There's the, really eight. There's eight of them? Yes. Well, you know the one that has all the listing of yes, all Yes, I do. Them. So is there any particular order for that? Um, what Peter, what that is, that, that, that's, guys. no, there's the apostles, right? Uh, what what that? I'm glad that's a very good question. That's a good question. I'll, I'll tell yeah. this. Her mother asked a good question. Um, that's that's an order of the first, uh, the second century of all the martyrs and everything else mm. oh. of those who are becoming into the kingdom. Mm. I love that. Like chrysogenes, you know. Yes. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Yes. I would like to do that every day. Mm. Good stuff. Yes. We Excellent. will continue. Okay. I did not get to the. Uh, you like the background, Mrs. Yeah. Cassidy? Yeah, very much. Did you do anything new tonight? Yes. Did anybody have a moment you went, hmm? Mm -hmm. Father, we just pray that we can be drawn into the mystery of who you are and what you mean and how you are coming in each of our lives. Bless this word to our hearts. In Jesus' name, we come to worship you, the Most High God. Bless our beloveds, oh yes, who are sick and not doing well at this Amen. moment. In Jesus' name, heal them and heal us. Amen. 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 Amen.